Hello students, it's your professor Mike coming at you with our very first Dreamweaver lecture. This is not in the classroom, so this will be without pauses and questions and stuff like that. It'll flow a little better and that's how I'm going to do all three of these first lectures for CS6 because I just felt like the ones I was doing in the classroom were getting a little a little too clogged up as I had to stop and go and stop and go. Uh, so if you're coming in to this video and you're not one of my students, uh, I also want to welcome you. Uh, this is the place to be if you want to crank out a quick website, you're not a professional coder or developer, you don't, you don't want to be an expert on a computer or need to be, but you want to get a website going and focus on optimizing. That's what my course is all about. I teach a course for marketing students at one of Ontario's larger business schools. And this course is designed to show these students that they don't need to be IT professionals to make a good website and then spend some time optimizing that site. Search engine optimization is what it's all about these days. It has been for a long time. The website being fancy and things flying in from the left and the right, that's not as important as keeping your users there with engaging content and calls to action. These are all things we'll get to later in further videos in my playlist. For right now, we gotta get started in Dreamweaver CS6, okay? So a few things I want you guys to know going in Okay, who am I? I just talked about that, and I'm not just an instructor of such things. I'm a marketing professor at a business school in Ontario, at one of Ontario's largest colleges, but I also do a lot of web work on the side. I have a real estate license. I, I, I am steeped in the industry and involved in a variety of web marketing type of things. So it's, it's coming from a guy that's tried a lot of different things, and this is the way I like to do it. I prefer to use Dreamweaver. Going into this, you're going to need some basic HTML and CSS knowledge, okay? And my students, you guys know, you've completed the web workshop right here at kinlandschool.com slash 5055. Four modules on HTML and CSS. Anybody watching the video that hasn't done this or isn't in my class is welcome to do this. I got to give W3 Schools a little credit for this. Me and another prof put this together for our course and catered the content and tweaked it to be more appropriate for our program, but we were basing it on the curriculum they have here at W3 Schools, which is a website run by the World Wide Web Consortium, which is a real organization that formed right around the same time as the web to try and control the types of code and monitor the behavior of people putting stuff on the web so we can keep it more universal and more uniform. And they offer free education here, I mean, educate yourself. It's not a make or break thing if you don't have any knowledge going into my tutorials, and this is a tutorial video. Okay, I, I do wanna stress that it's a full lecture video. I have lots of stuff in my YouTube channel if you wanna go check it out that are one-off concepts for Dreamweaver. Uh, most of which are done in CS5, but they're almost all of them are applicable to CS6, CS4, CS3. And same with this one. Even though I'm doing this in CS6, the system that I set up for my students, which I've, perfected in a way that makes it easier for them to set up a site and, and get to the optimizing sooner. I don't want them screwing around with the website for weeks and weeks, months and months. I want the site done in a matter of minutes and then they can focus on the content because that's what takes the most time. So these first three tutorial videos, they are full lecture videos. This one will be at least an hour long, just preparing you for that, but it will be very, very good if you've never used Dreamweaver. And for my students that missed the class or they're not caught up, this just start from the beginning, guys. Start right here. It's going to be better off. I stop a lot and talk about file management. Everything I do in the video could probably take me about 10 minutes if I just went through and did it. But I need to talk you guys through this stuff, okay? So there will be a more compressed version available. As soon as I finish all three parts, I'll do a fourth one that's a compressed version of everything together. And all of these concepts, that's pretty much what's on your test, okay, from these lecture videos. So that's, so you're gonna have the full lecture videos, one, two, three, and then you're gonna have the compressed version, all of which can help you prepare for the test that's coming up very soon probably, uh, if you're watching this now, because most of my students don't watch it until right before the test. Uh, if you're not in my class, you don't have to worry about a test, but you do need to have some of this. It's, if you don't have any yet, you could probably still get through, especially these first few videos, but eventually you're gonna wanna brush up your skills on basic HTML and CSS, and I've shown you a couple good places to do that, either my workshop or w3schools.com. And you should have Dreamweaver installed, of course. It's, this isn't gonna work if you don't have Dreamweaver installed. Dreamweaver is free for 30 days from Adobe. Um, you're probably gonna want a license once you start using it, because it's awesome. It, it, you know How you get a license is up to you. I, I would never condone or promote piracy software. I, I have a paid license on my computer. It's, you know, get it how you get it, and 
let's start working in Dreamweaver. So, and, and again, it, it does work for earlier versions, what I do here. As you're watching my videos, best to load them at full screen, the resolution's better, and anytime I'm going fast and I just crank through something, just pause me, okay? Pause me, rewind. Students, you guys know it's tough in my lectures that are done in the classroom. So here, if you need to see me do something over and over again, just pause me and keep going back and watching it. Okay, so let's get cracking. So here's a list of what we're going to cover. Uh, I don't script my videos, as you probably already guessed. I'm, I'm talking here and there about various things, but I always try and give myself a guideline of what we're going through in each video, and it'll either be done with notes from my class. These are taken right from my class. As my students know, you guys would go into uh, content here. This is the first link in week five. So this is our. what you're going to see in this video is covering this stuff. Part one of the three-part series, week five, that is this stuff, okay? And I'll either start with something like this in my videos or I'll start with a quick uh, PowerPoint slide that talks about what I'm going to do and then I'll go and do it and then as, I, as I'm as i getting through things I'll kind of check back in with the list every now and then, okay? So first thing we're going to talk about, why Dreamweaver? Okay, that's why you're watching this video, you want to learn to use Dreamweaver, you haven't learned to use it. Why Dreamweaver instead of one of these content management systems that are on the web that are free, okay? And that's what a CMS stands for. That's Content Management System, CMS. And that's what you hear a lot of people refer to these construction programs as these days. Not, not applications, but content management systems. Okay, so you get a website set up, you get it into the portal, you get it into the program, and then you're going in frequently and updating and editing. And if you're not, you're not optimizing the site well. So, of course, there are other options. And I did want to talk about that briefly, and my students were asking me the same thing. Uh, a lot of students prefer this one, Wix. They think it's great, okay? And you have to set up an account, and then you got to log in every time you mess with your site. And here's the deal with Wix, and a lot of them are like this. Can I download my Wix page? I'll give you a second to read that, and then I'll... Okay, so when I say I'll give you a second, it's you could probably pause. But no, you can't download your Wix page. Why is this a bad thing? You can't get good access to the code in its rawest format, which you can in Dreamweaver, of course. And it's, it's bad for optimization. There's a lot of things you're going to need to do in your code. Google Analytics being one of the biggest ones. You can track all the traffic that's on your site, where they came from, how long they were there. It's difficult to make that work properly when you use these online portal systems. So I'm going to jump over to another page here. This is a service. These guys offer a service, SEO Moz. It's kind of expensive, but SEO is, is, wow, it's a lot of work. I mean, making the website is the easy part. And that's why after watching my first three tutorial videos here, you guys will be able to make a website like that. You could just watch the compressed one and make a website in less than half an hour. It's optimizing it and tweaking the content, and spending time, getting everything set up that, that actually takes more time. And you can see what this guy says right here. A lot of people say Joomla's great. You know, J-O-O-M-L-A. This is one of those other online platforms that works. They say you can get access to the code, unlike Wix, where you can't download it. And I had to log in just to get this info, right? That's another time-consuming little thing you have. This guy says he recently took the task of performing several hundred pages on Joomla, and it was, a, it was a nightmare. So these guys here are talking about WordPress. And WordPress is another one of the big ones. And if you do stuff, I think it's thesis theme. It, if you set up a site in a certain way in WordPress, yes, it is easier to optimize, but still, SEO, Moz, Wix, like all these different choices, I don't think any of them can compete with, with having an, a, a remote, sorry, local. These are all remote, right? Joomla, uh, Wix, uh, what was the other one? WordPress, of course. These are remote. You you're using their servers, you're logging on to their sites, you're, you're getting on via a connection to the internet. You can't do it unless you're connected to the internet and you're on the web. Dreamweaver is local. It's on your machine. You're on a plane for four hours. You can edit your site the whole time. There's a lot of advantages here, okay? And just like these sites online, uh, like WordPress and Joomla, you make a quick change with the click of a button in Dreamweaver, it's uploaded to your server and it's live and active. So, I mean, one of the downfalls is that Dreamweaver is not the cheapest program out there, but if you're learning and you're a student in any venue, just go in and try and get the education discount, and it's, I don't know, it's not that bad. Just find Dreamweaver. You're going to need it if you want this video to work for you. So, so we've just talked about why Dreamweaver. Let's go and open it up now. So I know I've taken, uh, where am I at now, almost 10 minutes just to getting to opening Dreamweaver, okay, which, and there's a reason for that. Like, I'm... I'm a professor, I'm not just doing one-off videos here, I'm trying to get people in my class to use this that have never ever used it. And as you know, as my students, this this is not an easy thing 
because we have become a little, I don't want to say lazy, but computer technology and smartphones and tablets and similar devices have encouraged us not to pay attention to where files are saved, where anything's going, how things are working. And that's why it takes so long for me to start my students in a Dreamweaver. I'm trying to get you guys to start using an application and at the same time learn and see all the mistakes that people make and then spend hours trying to fix when they really should only take a minute or two. So that's why my first lecture here is a little bit longer and that's why until now we haven't even opened Dreamweaver yet. Uh, so Dreamweaver's a very good tool for working on websites. You can build in there, you can just bring it into there and work on it in there and that's what I teach my students is you know, of course we can make beautiful, gorgeous sites in Dreamweaver laid out with the CSS in Dreamweaver and all the little tools they have. I just think that's not an efficient use of their time, an effective use of their time more so, when they're marketing professionals and they need to be working on the content. So I recommend to them to go out and get a template that looks like it'll work for what they've set up. And you know, you wanna think about it. We, I have my students do a concept map and plan it out and then you bring it into Dreamweaver. So. First, they, they, you guys we are going to open Dreamweaver. We don't have the template yet. Let's open up Dreamweaver and check it out and take a look at it, okay? So I go into my programs. If you're on a Mac, it'll probably be floating around down here somewhere. And I do make my videos Mac and PC friendly here, okay? So I, I'll try and mention when things are a little bit different on a Mac versus a PC, just so you guys know. Uh, I am in Windows, but it should work for you in either operating system. So mine is in the master collection here. I have some Adobe apps kind of floating around that aren't part of the master collection. There's Dreamweaver right there. You may only have Dreamweaver and you don't have it in a folder. Wherever it is, it's going to be in programs. If you have it installed on your Mac, it's going to be somewhere and you're just going to click on it. So what I'm going to show you right here is not that relevant to Mac users. You could skip ahead of this. but. Uh, I am so big on you guys saving time in my class, right? So I don't want you wasting time. I actually see students coming into my class and just wasting time opening programs because they can't even find where they are. Okay, so right off the top, don't even open it yet. Right click on the Dreamweaver icon in your program menu and put it where you know is gonna be easiest for you to go back and see it every time. I don't like piling stuff up on my desktop, but that is an obvious choice to put it in your desktop. I prefer one of these choices. You can pin it to the taskbar down here I already have a few things in there, so I'm gonna to pin to start menu. And by pinning to start menu, if I go back out, every time I go in to open my programs, anything above this line that a pin to start menu will be there. You see I've got Outlook there to check my email. I got Notepad there because I do some editing in Notepad and we were just doing the web workshop. Now that's there and it'll always be there. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. Okay, so you see mine open pretty quickly because I've recently had it open. Uh, yours might take a bit longer, these Adobe apps, they do consume a lot of resources and overhead on your machines. Um, even on a Mac, it might take a bit longer to open. Uh, mine's been open and closed several times since my computer started, so it was a bit quicker. Uh, and here we are in Dreamweaver. This is Dreamweaver CS6. It'll look very, very similar to previous versions all the way back to 3, pretty much. Um, and I want to introduce you guys to the workspace here. So before we even go and make a new HTML, let's take a look around at what's going on. I see a files pane here. I see some CSS stuff. I can't click on it. It's shaded gray because I don't have a file open yet. This is the properties inspector. That's not available to me in terms of what I can do down there because I don't have a file open. And then I've got a series of menu items. A lot of this will be similar to what you're used to looking at in Windows. Okay, it's, it's not going to be that bad. And you should be able to use the same keyboard shortcuts on a Mac versus PC. Command C is copy on a Mac. Control C cut, paste, all that kind of stuff. It's all still relative, okay? And it's good to know your keyboard shortcuts if you're gonna start adding your websites, okay? So I've got a, a resource I can show you for that too in just a second, but let's look at the workspace. Every time you open up Dreamweaver, I want you guys to be seeing the welcome screen. Sometimes people accidentally click here and don't show the welcome screen, so one of the first things we're gonna learn is how to get the welcome screen back. Because from the welcome screen, you can go to all these great Adobe resources, and who's, you know, who better besides me, uh, to teach people how to use Adobe apps uh, than Adobe. So you can go to lots of cool stuff here. You can go to different um, building tools here, create all the different types of files that Dreamweaver will create, and this is just the main ones. Uh, you can set up a new site. This is the big thing we're doing today uh, near the end of the lecture. Um, all your recent files here, and I don't have any site set up in Dreamweaver right now, so I just, I just opened up Dreamweaver and it just went to my C drive. It might default to your desktop. 
This here is the same as, as navigating files and windows or on your Mac. It's just doing it inside of Dreamweaver. And it's identical until you make a Dreamweaver site. And when you make a Dreamweaver site and you navigate files in here, it knows it's a website and it does things to help you keep that site better put together, organized, the links are still working, things like that. For right now, it's just a file navigator. It's the same as Windows. So that's your workspace. If you lose uh, the welcome screen, which I do really like, you can go into Edit Preferences. And we're not going to get into all these different menus, but the very first thing in the very first tab at the very top, Show Welcome Screen. Somehow, and sometimes Macs do this on their own by accident. It's just got unchecked, okay? You might have hit this by accident, something. I think it's great to have up there so you can check it back and turn it on right there. If you're on a Macintosh, I believe you click here and go to preferences instead of here. So things are a little different on a Mac, but not too bad. Okay, so I've jumped over to a graphic that I've posted on my server on the web here. Uh, students, you guys haven't seen this yet. I didn't put this in Fanshawe Online for you. This is just posted here online. It is in the notes for this week. Um, so this, it looks a little different because this isn't in classic view right now, it's in designer view. Uh, but it names a bunch of the stuff that we're going to be using. And it's important that you know what the tag selector is, the property inspector, or the files panel. At least those things, okay? The rest of it's pretty self-explanatory. Designer, if you set it up this way, it'll do one on top of the other. I prefer one beside the other versus split and design, but we haven't even got to that yet. I just, because we're exploring the workspace over here, I wanted to quickly show you guys uh, that I do have a graphic set up that kind of names uh, the main things that we're going to be messing around with in the workspace. And these, these panels we'll be using by the second lecture, we're going to be messing around with this today and the, the code versus split versus design view thing and this workspace menu thing, which we're going to do right now. Okay, so one of the second things I want to show you, uh, besides dealing with the welcome screen and making sure it's there if you lose it, is switching around your workspaces. Now in our class and, and in my videos, because I just prefer classic, I, I'm always in classic view, okay? So classic view is chosen by being up here. If things look different to you already, it's because you're not in the same view. So let's fix that right now. A lot of Dreamweavers, I think, this default to designer view, which looks pretty darn close, but you don't have those additional tool shortcuts here, okay? And I like the tool shortcuts because then you don't have to go digging around the menu for stuff. And, and as I've explained, I'm like the students in my class. I don't want to be a professional coder. I'm a marketer. I want to get things done. I want to get a, get a site online fast and get it out there. So I want things um, on the surface here. I want quick access to them. That's why I prefer classic. And there's coder, designer. So if I ask you guys on the test to switch from coder and then switch back to classic, you're not going to have a blank file open like this and switch back and forth from code to design view. I'm jumping ahead a tiny bit here. But that's not what I'm asking you to do. If I ask you to switch workspace views, I'm asking you to deal with the workspace menu here and switch around views. And I prefer to be on classic. So when I teach, I'm always in classic, okay? You guys may decide you want to use another view and that's totally fine. I just wanted to show you how it works. If for some reason you've like collapsed something and you don't see it anymore and your files menu is like your files panel is floating around out here and you want stuff to just be back the way it was, in the original view, you can reset the view that you're on. Like right here, you can reset, and you can do this with any of the workspace views. I'm gonna reset classic, it puts everything back. Okay, see that's, I see students oftentimes sitting there trying to figure that out and wasting time. You guys don't need to be wasting time on the test doing stuff like that, okay? So what have we done so far? Let's take a look. Okay, so why Dreamweaver? We talked about that in relation to the competing online WYSIWYG platforms. We talked about the welcome screen. We've been exploring the workspace, looking at the different things that are there. I showed you this graphic, okay, right here, and the link to that is in your notes, okay, for week five, it's right there. Um, I will add that link into the video as well, so you guys will have seen it. And let's do this, okay, let's make a blank file. I know I've been talking about how we're gonna use the Dreamweaver site function to make a site. That's not actually gonna make any files, okay? It isn't, it's, it's just gonna to connect to a main root folder on your computer. So. Before we just jump right into that and grab a pre-designed site, I do want to make a quick page to demonstrate to you guys how different this is than the web workshop. Right off the top, I went to new HTML. So when I went in, okay, I was at the welcome screen. I clicked new HTML. You can go file, new HTML from here. You can make your new CSS from here. Those are the two files we know how to make from scratch. The other codes are things we'll talk about later on in the course, okay? 
and they'll be in much shorter videos. For right now, we're learning how to use this application. We got a bunch of stuff to cover. Let's create a new HTML from right there. It, it should default to open in, in design view. So this is not, again, I wanna clarify this. Changing your workspace view or your workspace layout. Let's stop calling it a view. That's, that's just what I call it. But it's, it's a layout of all the things in Dreamweaver that you have available to you. Okay, changing that around does not change any files. It's just the application itself. This is your file in this window. Before I opened it, I could still change the workspace around, but I didn't have access to any of these tools that I get in Classic View. As soon as I open up a file, I can use those tools. Now, this is stuff we'll get to later, some of these shortcuts. For right now, we're just doing some basic, just like the web workshop. Let's start and make a quick page here. My, my name is Mike. Sorry, I bumped my mouse pad there for a second. My name is Mike. This is my very first Dreamweaver web page. Remember when we did this in Notepad and Text Wrangler on your Macs and we made your very first web page? This is your first Dreamweaver web page. Oh, Mike, that looks a lot simpler than what we did in Notepad. Well, it isn't. It's actually the same exact thing, but because we're working in a brand new environment that we call WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, okay? Same as the online WYSIWYG programs. If we switch to code here, you see what you were working on in the web workshop. You have the larger, I mean, as I always tell you guys, this this initial tag could just be this, okay? It's just as soon as it goes online, the W3 is gonna attach this serial to it. So Dreamweaver does that for you. You've got your initial HTML tag. You're always gonna have your head and your close head inside of it. You will have metadata. Most search engines are saying now this stuff doesn't matter if you do the keywords and the, we'll put those in later. For right now, we're keeping this stripped down. We've got a page title. We've got a body. I'm entering these lines just to separate it so you guys can see it better. And just like in Notepad, none of these will show up on the screen. Uh, it's just adding extra space for our eyes to see this stuff. It's just easier on the eyes, right? So there we go. It, it looks just like Notepad. And I'm getting to that and accessing the code immediately by going to Code View. Something that with those online WYSIWYG programs like Wix, it's, it's complicated. So when it's time to paste in your Google Analytics code, you're messing around trying to figure it out. We're in Dreamweaver, we go code view, cut, paste, done. It's, it's super simple. So that's why I like Dreamweaver. And now that you have design view, you can start doing some of the things you did in code view, like a simple HTML format tag. Highlight the text, control B. What does that do? Well, it changed the text. Go over to code view. Oh, cool. I don't have to do that anymore. I don't have to type the chevrons with the tag in it and then the tag with the backslash in front of it. Nope. You might have to change some code around. You might have to still pay attention to code. It's good that you know a bit of code, but this is how we can create content now. And what we're doing now in its rawest format, we can still make up, let's say you had to make up a quick page for like a friend's get together or something like that. And you wanted to throw it on your server. You could go to blank page and let's mod let, look down here, properties, okay? This is the properties inspector. Under here, you can go to page properties and you can get to this from modify too as well. All the stuff you can get to from shortcuts in classic view, it's all in the menus as well. I just prefer to be able to get to it more quickly, right? Let's change the text color to uh, red because your roommate loves red and she's having this shower for her mom because she's getting remarried to her dad why am i it's 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 this great heartwarming story now you can crank her out a quick little website pretend it was a bunch of work and it's going to be this easy she likes black on red even though that doesn't suit the thing very well but your friend's emo or something like that so we put that in there we click apply wow what the heck it's like what what's going on here mike it's just that easy go to code view check it out oh my lord look at this oh my lord I'm trying, I'm making this commitment, guys, to not swear in my videos now. So I'm going to say some kind of funny stuff. <laughs> uh, so what you know in my class already is that if you want to embed CSS, you would put it in the head somewhere, and then you have the HTML tags, and you got the squiggly brackets, property value, squiggly bracket, property value, squiggly brackets. So you, you already from, you're already familiar with this, and you have to have the start style and the close style if you put it in the head. All I did was click a couple things and it changed the font and the page background color like that. I didn't have to sort it out. You can see it even used the shorter version of the simple web colors because the, the web sa the safest web color codes you can use are the three digit ones and Dreamweaver will always use those. It'll still accept most of the six digit ones, but you can't always count on that. 
okay, which is another reason you want to have browsers to preview it, which is one of the other things we're about to get to, okay? So what we've seen here is a basic HTML page created, and in the page, we, we had CSS just pop in there just by editing page properties. And just by highlighting text and using a keyboard shortcut, we had HTML tags pop right in there. And you'll see right away that the, the majority of stuff Dreamweaver is going to do, unless you choose in the properties to make it relative just to the HTML on this page or just to that content, is going to be CSS. And when you go to create new CSS and you have a sheet, it'll actually ask you, do you want to put it in the sheet? Do you want to put it in the head? How do you want to do this? Okay. So if I were to go further with this content in design view and highlight it, okay, and I want to, I want to uh, align here. Okay, so for alignment, I, you can go format, align, but look at this in the properties inspector. Look, check it out. I can align it right there. Align center. I go into code view. Hang on a second. Where did it align the div? It's got to be in here somewhere. Refresh code. Oh, it's right there. Yeah, of course. Text align center. So it did it in the CSS, and this is, this is what it will typically default to do if you don't actually choose another way to do it. We're going to get a lot more into this when we get in a site that's already made for us and start manipulating the CSS. I just wanted you guys to see that doing this in WYSIWYG, it's building all the code you've already learned how to do. And now is the time, before we bring in our first site, to quickly review the CSS hierarchy. So what you see here is inline, okay? That's an inline style. That's actually an inline HTML style. But you can also have, as we've learned, CSS inline around this text. You can have a span class or something like that. And we've discussed that. And that is the most powerful because any other CSS that's floating around, that'll override it. Any CSS that's in here up in the head will override any connection made to an external sheet. Even though the way you start with CSS to do an entire site is typically with the external sheet. So really quickly, let's jump back to the web workshop. Okay, and here was our explanation from the web workshop. And this is the same as you'll get it from most websites or ehow.com. That was funny. I was just tilted on my chair. I almost wiped out. It's funny you guys have to listen to me for this long, but you never get to see me. I'm just cruising around in my office here. Uh, back to the content here. An external CSS sheet will win over any browser built in HTML. So when we learned CSS after we spent those couple weeks on basic HTML, everybody was like, wow, this is great. You can just put all your formatting into one CSS file, make that connection to it in the head of the HTML file where you want that formatting to appear, and it'll override the stupid way that browser is making our H1 look. So let's say I wanted H1 in our CSS sheet. I, I told it with properties and values in the CSS code to be green and to be font size 20 and to be Verdana. Okay, that's what I put in there. And then... On one of my sheets in my site, which it was like uh, my contact page, I wanted to change the size of the heading slightly. So on that sheet, I took the code I had, sorry, on that in that HTML page, I took the H1 code I had in the sheet, I pasted it into the head with a start style and a stop style tag, and I changed the size in what I put in, in, in the embedded code. That will override this, okay? And then... I wanted to go down to the very bottom and I was still using H1, but I wanted this H1, instead of it to be green, I wanted it to be red, okay? So I put a, a CSS font color style in line right around the H1 just to make that one H1 red and it overrode the green uh, the green tag from up here, okay? So I just, give me one second, I'm gonna type this. Here, let's just build this really quick, okay? so. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I, I was in the properties inspector and I was on CSS. Okay, I wasn't on HTML. That's where you can pick all that stuff instead of going into here and doing it. And it switched me to there automatically when I initially did some CSS page property changes. Okay, before that I was just on my basic HTML stuff. You can do links here. You can apply a class that you have in CSS. We don't have any yet. Uh, you can do a basic H1 format. So let's highlight this and make it H1. Okay, format, heading one. Okay, and le then let's say I decided I wanted to change heading one so it wasn't, uh, I don't like that font type at all. And I'm gonna, I might change a couple other things too. So that's heading one HTML that a browser is automatically gonna get just like in the web workshop. I wanna change heading one 
go here. This is some basic CSS. I'm getting a little ahead of what I wanted to do in this lecture, but that's okay. Um, let's add a new rule. So if we highlight that, okay, it won't actually make any difference because we're doing this in CSS. So highlighting it, not highlighting it, it doesn't matter, remember, because H1 is there and that's what's gonna be affected. So if we go edit rule, it'll say, what do you wanna do? Remember all this? We learned that you can have a class that'll apply to any one HTML element, okay? You can have a tag that redefines an element, uh, sorry, an ID. Correct myself here. Um, so the tag would be a redefinition of any HTML. That's the formatting stuff. And you can decide what you want strong to be in your CSS, just like we did with IDs, okay? I usually refer to all of them as tags, but ID, tag, whatever. These are the main tags. So this would be like H1, okay? And we could do this document only, all right? So we're gonna redefine. By doing that, we know it's gonna go on the head. If we did new style sheet, it would create a new sheet for us. We will get more into this later. I just want you to see the difference between the hierarchy and how, how Dreamweaver's making all this for us. So we click OK. Okay, now when we go, to, now see this? It's starting in H1 for us. Okay, when we go to H1, we, hang on, why did it throw a number sign in there? Hang on one second. Okay, I know, I wasn't gone at all as far as you guys were concerned, but I just sorted that out there. It was because I was highlighting something, and I also made another mistake, which I'm glad I caught myself on. So, okay, so we made an H1. We go over here, we've got H1, H1, what did I do here now? Let me fix that really fast. Okay, good, so it's just an H1 and a close H1. We learned how to do that in the web workshop, right? Here's why Dreamweaver is so nice, because if you wanted to redefine that, you'd have to go in here and type H1 and do the squigglies and do all the properties and values and make sure you get your colon and your semicolon, because as soon as you miss one, it gets all screwed up. You can still be in design view and not highlighting anything, because you know you don't need it highlighted. It's just gonna, it's just gonna make it right. And I think I mentioned the highlighting thing already. Here are the, the, uh, the CSS rules you have so far for standard HTML tags. You go to new rule and you go edit rule. Now, class, okay, we learned what class is. When you have a standard HTML element, standard HTML tag, a class can redefine just that tag if you add the class into the HTML like we did with the table class in the web workshop. We're not doing that right now. So a class can be used anywhere on any page and any site. If it's in a sheet, it can be used anywhere on the page if you put it in your head, but that's not what we're doing. ID is where you have like the divs, okay? I just, I, I had to correct myself here and I, I've been typing it out with you guys for four weeks so I forget some of the terminology even though I do this every day. An ID is where you make up the name. Typically you don't wanna use the standard name for an HTML element and then it'll redefine whatever appears in the content of the HTML in the body with that name. As you learned in the fourth module of the web workshop when we did the containers page, okay? The tag was how we started doing CSS. So with the tag, you can choose a standard HTML tag. H1 is of course one of them. You don't even have to type it in. Keeping it this document only means it won't go into, an, into a separate sheet, which we're gonna learn a bit later. And you click OK, and you get to format it just like you would format something by clicking properties down below. So you get to choose a font family here. I'm gonna choose Verdana instead of this. I don't like this, you know, the serif, the curvy things there. I know Verdana sounds serif, see? I'm gonna make it a little smaller. That's a little big there. And I'm gonna make it uh, all caps. Yeah, why not play around with that? And green, okay, apply, it's done. Even though in the code, nothing has changed here. So all that, now you already know this. You learned this in the web workshop. If you didn't, then you're learning a bit of CSS here by watching my video. And if you didn't, you can just do it in Dreamweaver and hope that everything stays clean. The advantage of knowing some CSS is you don't put extra stuff in there and have it floating around. So we used an ID CSS for H1. Here's your property, value, property, value, property, value, property, value. So if I had another document, for example, where I had H1 in the CSS file and that was attached up here in the head, but the font size was 18, this would override that because this is in, embedded in the head. And if I had more CSS around this down here, that would override this. So I just wanted to show you guys visually what's going on there so that we could review the hierarchy. And I told you when we did the hierarchy, we were gonna review the hierarchy, okay? The cascade. So it's good to understand this going into Dreamweaver because you're gonna have a lot of stuff where you're like, well, I want all my links to be this color, 
but then I want my links just in this div to be this color. So you set up your ACSS for, for, that, for that link formatting to be that way in that div. Okay, and this will be this will come up in the next couple of videos. So let's just get past this. I just I wanted to make sure I showed you guys how powerful Dreamweaver is in the way it does that without you having to do any code. And yes, all the online WYSIWYG things are the same, but Dreamweaver makes it a lot easier for you to fix stuff and manipulate it and then put in your analytics code later on and all kinds of other SEO stuff. Once you're done with the page, you go file, save as. And when you go to file, save as, it's going to default to automatically save as an HTML file. We're just, just for now, even though I never want you to do this, I want every, anything HTML you make that's going to be used in the web will always go in some kind of root directory in a folder on your machine that's set up for websites. For right now, we're just practicing, so we're going to call this test page. We're going to save it on our desktop. We're going to close up Dreamweaver because it's just, just to prove you don't need Dreamweaver open. We go to test page, and we're going to open it up to preview it. Okay, and there's what we just made, okay? Different looking heading one. You can see the browser didn't change it back and make it all serif and the bigger font. That's what my CSS is telling it to do. I made a blank HTML page. Never put in a page title. You can see we're going to get to that stuff, okay? But that's how you use Dreamweaver to do what we just did in the web workshop. Very different type of, of construction. Okay, so now if, if you're not going to want to keep that, just get rid of it. You can delete the test page. I want you to navigate to another place now. Okay, so you can be going to one of two places. You can go to FOL content for this course, or you can jump right to the templates place where I got this file. But uh, what we've done so far now, we've covered all through here. And we did a little bit of this. We haven't gone to live code or live view yet, but we, we switched around between code and design view. I actually don't know if I ever went to split view yet. I'll show you guys that once we get the site in. So what we're gonna do now is, uh, and we'll do more of this too, is we're going to get, instead of just making the blank HTML, we're going to get a pre-designed site. So you have a lot of stuff online like this, freecsstemplates.org, okay? And I want to give them credit because I'm using one of their templates. So freecsstemplates.org, I kind of dug around for a while and I found this one Red Avenue. I thought it was nice, clean, simple, appropriate for what I'm trying to teach. So all of us in my class will all have this, okay? We're all gonna have the same exact template. That's why if you missed this first class and you haven't done this yet, you're sitting there looking at the screen every class going, what's going on here? What is this Red Avenue thing? I don't even know what's happening. You need to bring your laptop, you need to be ready to go every class because we're gonna be doing stuff to the demo site now in every class from now on, okay? Uh, you will have a different site on the test, of course, but what I'm about to do is exactly what you have to do at the beginning of your test. Okay, you gotta get the site set up and put it in the Dreamweaver. So prior to that, that's why it was important that you learn how to open Dreamweaver, use the workspace, make a blank HTML file. Now you're done with all that stuff. Now you're actually doing what you're gonna do on the test, okay? So if you're not in my class, you can go directly to here. As long as this template is still available, it should be at this address up here. I think I've already thrown a link up to it in my video. Uh, if you're in my class, you would have gone to content in week five, right where we were going through all these things right now. A little bit lower than that is the demo website template, okay? So step number one, pick one. The process of picking one involves a lot more than I'm putting in this video. You're talking to the person you're making the website for. You're, you're figuring out what they want. You're literally drawing out on a piece of paper a concept map of where they want to put things in their site. Just like we did, uh, when was that, at the, end of, uh, at the end of last week. Okay, just like I had you guys do here. Okay, now right now you're grabbing a template that I just picked because I thought it would work well for the class. But you want to take a little more time in your research process. And there's lots of websites available that we will discuss uh, later, not in this video, but a little bit later when you're ready to make your own. For right now, you should just use the same exact one I have so that it's easier to, to emulate and do the same things I'm doing. Uh, but if you were gonna do this in the real world, you'd set up a concept map like this, figure out where you wanted stuff to go. It's just, you could draw it on a piece of paper, really. And this is something I have my students do so that it's, it's not an information architecture, which is the long form of planning out a big full-on website. It's just taking a client, they have a small marketing site, they want to set up, where do you want stuff, what do you want on it, right? And then when you go to pick a template, and I'm searching around on this site just by chance, and there's lots of sites out there, I thought this one would work really well. No, I'm not going to be able to use that picture of the buildings. I might change some colors, I might change some fonts, but the layout of it and where the menu is and how many menu items, they want six menu items. I only have five here, but I know I'll be able to fit six. If you want like 12 or 15, you might need some side nav. So when you're going to do your research to find one, make sure you pick one that works for you. For right now, if you're going to do this tutorial with me, 
go get this one, okay? And for my students, you can get it right here, okay? And content at the, in the week five content area. It was right there, here. Step number one. And this is where I start to really draw things out. You think I've been drawing things out up to this point in the video. You, you guys have a problem with file management. You've proven it in my class. I think everyone our age has a problem with file management because we just don't pay attention to where files are. Hey, where's this song in your iTunes? I don't know where it is on my computer. I just know it's playing in iTunes, right? Hey, can I copy this? Now iTunes let you, lets you copy stuff right out of iTunes, so you still don't have to know the actual file location. But that those concepts you learned in grade five, maybe earlier, about how folders work on computers and where files go, that's how websites work. And that's what we did take a lot of time in the web workshop learning prior to getting to this point, okay? So what we're about to do here is, uh, where'd we go? Why Dreamweaver? previewing Dreamweaver, so we're importing a pre-design, and then after we do that, we're gonna jump back to a few things we didn't spend that much time on here, but we're importing a pre-design constructed downloaded site, and it is this, and it is also in Fanshawe Online, right? Uh, why do I keep scrolling past that? Right here, okay? So I'm, I'm slowing down here because you guys are gonna mess this up. Like, when I click on this, in, in Firefox, for example, it just tells me to save it. it. Doesn't tell me where it's saving. It just says save it. I know this is weird to be in a, an introductory, you know, video on Dreamweaver, introducing you to Dreamweaver, and now we're going to spend five minutes talking about how to save files. But this is, I have seen my students on my test. You guys, I can't stress this enough. Waste more time trying to figure out where they kept saving the zip to, than actually unzipping it and working on the website. It was something that should take 30 seconds. Here's why. When you download a browser like Firefox or Chrome, and I, and I keep encouraging you guys to have multiple browsers. I'll remind you about that at the beginning of the next video, okay? Multiple browsers. Um, they default typically to save stuff in downloads. Now, if you went to your downloads folder right now, okay, I bet it'd be full of stuff. Now, if you're on a Mac, maybe not, uh, but I bet you'd have a lot of stuff in downloads if you went to your downloads folder on a PC. On a Mac, I think most browsers default to save it onto your desktop, actually, but I'm not sure. I don't use Macs too often. Bottom line, wherever it's defaulting to save, whatever it's doing, pay, figure out where it's saving. Pay attention to it, okay? So I want to save this file, and I've gone into Firefox and actually gone to the options here, options, options, and I've changed this to save all files to my desktop. I've done the same thing to Chrome, so whenever I download something and it doesn't give me the option, I always know where it's gonna go. And I never just click open, okay? You guys probably noticed that. And the same thing would happen if I did it from here, download. Download zip. I'm not gonna click open, because if I click open, it's gonna unzip it right away, and I'm not even gonna know where the files are. Don't click open, okay? Save the whole zip and I need you to use the zip later for a best practice that I teach my students anyway. So, and if I were to do this, it's the same exact file. It's gonna to wanna to replace the other one. Um, that's probably what it's thinking about right here. Oh, maybe not, maybe it just renumbered it. It did, okay, so it added a number in. So these are both the same exact template. If you're in my class, you can get it from FOL. If you're not, I just showed you, you can get it right from here, okay? So now that we have the template, Let's deal with it. And I'm hoping that you guys paid attention to what I just talked about in terms of where it went to save. If, if you didn't, go back. Go back and, and figure it out, okay? You are not wasting time on the Dreamweaver test trying to figure out where your files save off the web. These are things you should have learned a long, long time ago, okay? Unfortunately, as a realistic instructor of this type of thing, I, I am uh, seeing this as an issue all the time. Okay, so if you're in Explorer, for example, and a lot of people still use Explorer quite often, it actually does give you the option to save as, and then you can choose where to save it and put it on the desktop. Now on the desktop is not where it's gonna stay, because your next step is to create a folder on your machine, and this is for all of my students, or anybody that's watching this video that's not a student. If you're starting to make websites and this is your first crack at it and you're just getting into it, you're gonna wanna do this, okay? Decide on your machine where you're gonna have a folder where your sites are stored. On your Mac, maybe the desktop is the easiest spot, but you're not just gonna put the root directory on the desktop. You're gonna make a folder called sites or websites and put it in there. I don't want mine on my desktop. I like to keep the desktop fairly clean. So I'm gonna go and explore and see. I could put it in my documents. That's not a bad spot. I, th I think that's an okay place to start putting sites, but I actually wanna have mine, my user, 
folder, if I open that up, I don't even want it because documents are like documents and that's where this is. I want it at the same hierarchy level as this. I'm going to put it in my user folder, my main user folder, as a folder called sites. And you can call it sites or websites. You can call it whatever you want, okay? As long as it's appropriate for what's in there. And inside of there will be any website you create in one folder. You won't have multiple folders in here, okay? You're going to have root directories for websites in here. Okay, this folder that you just created is not a website folder. It's an organizing folder to store all of your websites. Now we're going to jump to a page really quick um, to explain further what I'm doing. I'm going to have you just look at it. I'm going to pause the video and you guys can pause the video. I'm going to keep talking but here. Just Okay, so right here, uh, we looked at that. We spent some time there. We already talked about that. Here we go. Okay, what is a Dreamweaver site? This is what we're about to do. And re the reason we don't have Dreamweaver open yet, even though we're creating a Dreamweaver site, is because we're not just going to make the folder and then build the site in it. We're getting a pre-designed website. And then the folder is made by Dreamweaver sites. Just take a look at this. I want you guys to read this. And, and you're going to have to go to this link, which I will link to the YouTube video. Okay, It's also linked in FOL for my students. If you guys were in content, uh, it's it's under week five. It's, I think it's the very last thing. What is a Dreamweaver site there in the in the first module for week five? It's even in these notes. I stuck it everywhere. Um, learn about Dreamweaver sites. It's right there, which you can't click on that in the video. So I put the link in the video if you're watching it. So take a minute. Read. Okay, so I didn't I didn't stop at all. I'm hoping you guys paused and actually looked at this because this part right down here is really really important. Okay, maybe some of you are going to end up being like me. All right, I have a URL that is the main URL for an account, a web services account where I have hosting, and it's grandbanontario.ca. If I go and type that in, it doesn't even go anywhere because I don't have anything in the main folder. I don't have any sites associated with it yet. I haven't decided I'm going to use it for anything. Inside of this main folder, I have this website. Okay, I have uh, this website. Okay, I also have, what else did I have? I got like 30 of them in there. I'm just trying to remember them right now. Okay, I also have this one. I mean, that's only three of the many sites that I have in there, each of which are in a folder named appropriately. So this is in a folder called The Magic Moments. And there's an index file in that folder, and that is a root directory. And they're all in this one big folder uh, that, that I connect to. In a way, I don't want to say connect, but this... I have a main URL that I paid for because I thought it was a good one. I'm not really using it, so I just made that the main URL. That's my main folder, but it's not a root directory for any site until I put a site in that main folder floating around. Okay, That's why this part was so important. So I want you to do the same thing on your computer because the odds are you're never going to have just one website. I want you to make a folder for websites and then put the folder inside of it. If you're, if you're watching this video wondering why the heck I, I'm having to explain this in this much detail, believe me. I mean, our this modern technology, smartphones, tablets, and the way computers work and the way iTunes works, it, it has taught us never to pay attention to folders at all. So it's, I do need to explain this in detail. So once you have that folder made, inside of this folder is where you're going to put your site. You're not going to unzip the site and have all the folders and files floating around in there. You're going to make a folder for it. So let's make the folder now and then bring this in there so there's just no confusion. Uh, the site is going to be called Red Avenue for now. Okay, that's just the name. I mean, we can give it a different name in a minute, but that's so then we know where it's going to put. Let's put it in there. Okay. Now, at this point, I want to point out a few things that might be screwing you right up. If you're on a Mac, when you downloaded this, it's very possible that it unzipped it automatically for you. I think it's probably because you hit open instead of save, but. A couple students max they actually showed me they hit save but it still didn't save the zip file it unzipped it for them and then gave them the unzipped site if that happened to you what you probably got um, okay was this and you may have gotten it not even in a folder if you got it not in a folder what I need you to do is take everything in that folder right now and this is only if you have a Mac and it unzipped it on by accident on you right click or command click it sorry and you must have some type of software on there either send a compressed zip or you can use uh, this is WinRAR to add to archive and you're gonna make a zip version of it because even though it unzipped for you and that's what we eventually want I want everyone at this point to still have a zipped up version of the site 
And in about five more minutes, you're going to know why I, I require that. It's, it's, it's a very good best practice that I want students to get into. So I st even if it unzipped it automatically for you in your Mac, I need you to practice some good file management here and zip it back up. So I'm just going to explain this one more time. You downloaded it from a site, okay? You either got it from FOL or from the free template site. So it was either from FOL if you're in my class or it came from here. You got a zip folder. In the case you didn't get a zip folder, I want you to take everything you got and zip it back up again. So you have a zip folder and the unzipped version. Then I want you to move all of that stuff into a folder you created on your computer called Sites into a, a root directory for this website called Red Avenue. I haven't told you what we're making the site about yet, so we're just gonna leave it Red Avenue for right now, okay? Inside of there then, I only have a zip folder because my computer didn't automatically unzip it. So I do want to extract here so I can extract and if you have winzip it's going to automatically put it into another folder so it's going to this is what it's going to do it's going to put it into another folder in the case that it did this you have to do some file management and fix this so this i mean there's ways around this you could have here i want this whole site cut out of that folder and put into here okay into the main folder and then you can delete that folder okay or alternatively and let's remove all this again because I still have it all in the zip. Okay, I made this folder in sites. I could have not done that. Oops, wait a minute. My zip was in there. Undo. Okay, let's pretend my zip was still on my desktop. So I could have not done that. And I could have unzipped. So I don't care, guys, bottom line, I don't care how you do it. But what I'm about to have in 10 seconds, you better have exactly what I have. And it shouldn't be that hard for you to get there. It's, this is not that complicated. And I'm not trying to pick on my students and they know I'm always harping on them for this. And same with you guys watching the video. We are not good file managers anymore. We have lost the ability to be good file managers. So relearning that is a huge part of being a good web manager, being a good web designer, and being a good search engine optimizer because everything in a website works and functions based on file paths. Everything. Okay, and that's how the Dreamweaver site thing works. So we got to get that set up right. So I could have unzipped it here, bring the zip in. Okay, so I'll bring the zip in and I could have extracted into there like that. And then it makes the Red Avenue folder for me, okay? But some of you will have extracted, right? And, and when you extracted, it extracted all as separate files, not in the folder, in which case you'll have to put it into a folder called Red Avenue. I, I don't know how many different ways I can explain this. Bottom line, inside of your sites folder or websites folder, which is either on your desktop, your documents, somewhere in your machine, you need to have a root directory in that folder because you only have one website now. So you only have one root directory. Um, in a few videos, I'll show you when I transfer all my sites from my other machine into this one, I can have sites and I can have like 30 root directories, okay? Inside of that root directory, you're gonna have the site unzipped and then you're gonna have the zip version still saved. And we're gonna do this before we make the Dreamweaver site just so we don't get confused about it once we get it into Dreamweaver, okay? Okay, so as you can see, if you look into the Red Avenue folder that I just unzipped, it's got all the site files in it. It's got all the assets, the images, the CSS file, and an index. Some some templates will come with more than one page already designed for you, like sub pages and stuff. Especially if you get one that's like 20 or 30 bucks, you don't have to necessarily get a free one. Even for like 50 bucks, you can get a really well done website and not be wasting any time sorting out all the CSS and the layout and all that stuff. You can just focus on search engine optimization. So that's my goal here. I know at this point a lot of you might be like, well, isn't this kind of cheating? Well, no, it's free for use, free templates. So I've got one here, I've unzipped it. One thing I do want to encourage all of you to do, students and non-students alike, as soon as you get the site set up in its main root directory, you've got it unzipped, make a folder in it and call it raw. And inside of the raw folder is where you're going to save stuff in your site uh, that's like raw versions of files or uh, pictures that you end up changing, but you want to keep the original version, stuff like that. You may not always upload this to your server because it might end up getting kind of big. But what I'm going to suggest you put in there is the zipped up version of the original site. And then if you really wreck the CSS or mess it all up one time, you've got a zipped copy of it. The reason I make my students keep it zipped is because then when you're in Dreamweaver in the files pane, where we're about to set up a Dreamweaver site, you don't accidentally edit like the index and the CSS file in there. Because anything zipped, even if it's in a Dreamweaver site folder, it, it won't be able to be accessed in Dreamweaver. It'll, it'll open back up outside of that in Mac or in Windows. Put the license file in there too. 
you can drag it right in there. So what we've just done is we unzipped, we downloaded a zipped up site, we moved the zipped up site to a location on our machine, uh, which I set up on my in my particular machine as sites. You guys may on your Mac or PC have set up as something else. And inside of sites, we unzipped the site and had it unzip right into a folder called Red Avenue, which is which will be my root directory. If it didn't unzip into a folder, you needed to make the folder and put the files in there. However it worked out, that's what I want to happen. In case you got it unzipped for originally, you needed to zip back up the whole site once you were done and put the zipped version of it in raw, okay? So all of this that you're seeing is nothing more than super basic file management. If you're not comfortable doing this in the test and you don't think you saw what I just did, go back and do it again. Go back and watch it again. Go back and watch it again, okay? File management is not what you need to be wasting time on for the test. What I then had you do, moving the zip site into this folder you created inside of the main root directory called raw, is the only time you'll ever really move stuff around in your site folder unless you're saving new files into it without using Dreamweaver. And the reason for that is now when we go to set this up as a Dreamweaver site, which you've just read about and learned, we'll be doing that uh, so that when we move files around in Dreamweaver, it actually updates links. This is one of the most powerful things you can use in Dreamweaver. It, to have it set up as a site means it'll find problems, it'll name issues, you can search the code, you can do all kinds of great stuff, a couple of which we will take a look at today, just setting up the site initially here. So it's all set up, you can open Dreamweaver. Okay, so let's go open Dreamweaver again. And we had closed it before. If you still had it open, that's fine. So let's draw our attention over here to the files panel, okay? This is the files panel. If you're in classic view like me, it should be set up and looking about the same. And Typically, it'll default to go to your desktop and you're just navigating files, just like you are in Windows. I'm going here, I'm going here. If I go in here and I go to the C drive and I go to my user folder in the C drive, which is uh, msloan, and then I go down to sites, which is in here somewhere, there it is. There's my website folder. And then I'm in it, and now I start editing. I open up the index and it's, you're already making a mistake, okay? Here's why. In Dreamweaver, when you set stuff up, as a Dreamweaver site, instead of having just navigating to it in the folder, you have the ability to control when links are changed, how they're changed. It's just organized properly in a sense that you have everything at your fingertips to not screw up the connections between your CSS links, etc. Okay? So this is wrong. I don't want to see yellow folders. This brings up the green folder rule I tell my students. If I see you working in yellow folders, you're not, you didn't set up a Dreamweaver site. You didn't do this right, okay? So now that we know, we set up a website on our computer, we, which was basically just downloading a site, unzipping it, and then having it sitting in its root directory on the machine. A Dreamweaver site, in its simplest definition, describing it to, in, a, in the simplest way, will create a connection between that folder and Dreamweaver so it knows that folder is a root directory. And then from now on, when you go and do the drop down in your files pane, you'll see any sites you create listed there as green folders. That's all a Dreamweaver site is. It's not making any files. Well, technically it has like a little site file in the background, but it's, it's not making any web files. It's just connecting to a folder that is a website. If you don't have a folder yet, when you and you can get to Dreamweaver site from a few things. You can click on Manage Sites here. You can go New Site. This, by the way, looks a little different in CS6, okay? And I'll explain the differences in a second. Uh, you can drop down here, you can click on New Site, you can go to the Site menu, you can click on New Site. I mean, there's so many different ways you can do things in Dreamweaver, usually the same thing. I always like the welcome screen. It's just sitting right there waiting for you, new Dreamweaver site, okay? So when you click on New Site, the first window it pulls up, which does look similar to the way it's looked since CS3, pretty much, um, you're gonna name the site. And you're going to name the site according to what the name is, you know, for the content or whatever. I want to make a phishing site, okay? And and that's that's the content that I was going to reveal to you. We've been talking about it in class a lot. So let's put together a phishing site. We're, so we're going to call this uh, um, demo site phishing, okay? I think in my other sections, I might I might have had them do it in the section in the comp fifty fifty five demo site, you know, whatever it's going to be. Let's just call it demo site. You'll notice that I have capital letters and spaces. One of my big rules for you guys is when you're naming folders or files, no capital letters, no spaces. This is not the name for a folder or a file. This is simply a title for what this folder is going to be connected to, the web folder in Dreamweaver. These are the only two things you have to do for the test. 
You'll see if you click into servers, this is where you make a connection. If you click the plus button, that's where you put all your login credentials if you're connected to a server. Usually every time I set up a site, I'm doing all this stuff right away. Uh, you guys aren't quite there yet. We'll get there soon and there'll be a video for that as well. For right now, you're just doing a demo site. You're just doing this to practice for the test. On the test, whatever I tell you to name the site, you would name the site according to what I told you to name it. If you name it wrong, you're gonna get points off. It's, this is not that tricky. Just do what I tell you to do. The local site folder is the folder on your computer that this Dreamweaver site function is going to connect to <clears throat> and recognize as a root directory for a website. So do not do this. Do not allow it to make a folder called unnamed site. And usually Dreamweaver does default to my documents. I'm not sure where it would default to on a Mac. Do not allow it to make this random folder. Okay, so I'm about to do something that you shouldn't do. And I'll always try and warn you before I do that. Most of the stuff I've done, I've wanted you guys working alongside and doing it with me. Uh, this, I'm gonna hit save. <clears throat> you don't have to click hit save. If you do, I'll show you how to fix it. When I hit save, I made a demo site okay and, and I and I did connect it to a folder but I let Dreamweaver by default make this folder called unnamed site and that's the folder it's connected to and there's nothing in it I don't want to see that on your test I don't want to see that after your test get rid of it fix it get to clean it up now when I go back into Dreamweaver if I were to close and reopen Dreamweaver now check it out check it out Dreamweaver knows when you have Dreamweaver sites if you connect them to a folder and the folder gets moved or something's wrong that you need to fix it. So it'll right away from the beginning tell me, hey, you better go into Manage Sites and fix this. So I'm in the Manage Sites window, I double click on the site, I'm right back to where I was. So let's pretend you guys never left there because I didn't actually want you to do that incorrectly. I just wanted to show you how this actually works. I, I told it to connect to a folder called this and because I didn't have one named that already, it created the folder for me, okay? By doing that, it created a folder with nothing in it. So the site was created but it was blank. So then I went and deleted the folder, and by doing that, I broke the connection that Dreamweaver site had with the root directory on my computer. So that's all this is, is a connection. Click the folder button. Do not, by default, let it go where it's going. Go to where you made your website's folder. It's either sites on your desktop, somewhere, I don't know where. Mine is in um, my user folder under the name sites. Once you get in there and you see the root directory, don't just click select. You haven't gone far enough. See this? I just made sites my root directory. And this is what a lot of students do off from the get-go, okay? So they, I just did it incorrectly again, and then they're in here, and they edit in here. You're gonna lose 10 marks for not defining it properly, okay? This is not the root directory. This is a folder where you're gonna have a bunch of websites. This, in the folder, is a root directory. This should be at the top, okay? And that's what's going on on this explanation site here where they're talking about which folder you link. You don't link to your main login folder, which on your computer would be sites. You link to the, the, the local, this is my local folder on my machine. Once I go to the server space that we have in my class, for, with you guys, you can all go there. You're gonna be in your public folder. They should be the same folder. They should have the same name. That just makes it simpler, okay? They don't have to have the same name, actually. They'll work as long as you put the login credentials right. So I haven't gone deep enough. So I go back to manage sites to fix it under there. Manage sites, or you can go site manage sites. Or you can click manage sites over to the right there where we did last time. Double click the site. Click back in here again. What you need to do is just keep clicking in until you see stuff that's in the site. You're not gonna see files because it's only showing you folders. Once I see the images folder, I know I click far enough. I hit select. That is your file path. Everyone should have the same exact file path if you're doing this with me right now. You haven't changed it yet. You've left it Red Avenue. You have the same exact file path, okay? Click done, click done. Now we see this. If we sit on that folder, even though I named the site demo site, you see it gives the folder path to Red Avenue. So we know we have the right root directory. All it is is a connection to a folder, okay? If in, in, in class, and I think I did this in class, you close Dreamweaver. Let's say this is the end of the class because it, it almost is. We're almost at the very end here. Uh, I decided I closed Dreamweaver. Um, you know, I'm gonna go, and, and then I said, oh yeah, didn't Mike show us at the very end of class to go change the folder name? So I went and changed it in Windows instead of in Dreamweaver. I don't think you can actually change the main folder in Dreamweaver, it doesn't let you. But I went and changed it in Windows because Mike was showing me to change it, and I, I, I'm calling my folder Demo Site, just like the name. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute, no capital letters, no spaces, so I go Demo Site uh, for web design, and I get, you know, all the stuff I want in there. 
with with underscores, and then I do, I go to the rule, no capital letters, no spaces. But I change the folder name, and then I go and open back Dreamweaver, open Dreamweaver back up before my next class, and it oh there's that thing. Okay, I messed it up. I so all you got to do is go onto the site and fix the folder path. It's not a big deal. Okay, like I just did. See how long this takes? Look how fast I'm doing it now. That's how long this should take you to set up a site, literally. Yet students sit there for the first half an hour trying to figure out what a Dreamweaver site even is. Okay, this is a Dreamweaver site. You can do it from here. You can do it from the Manage Site menu down here. You can go New Site, okay? It's all the same thing. It all brings you to this window. You type in the name I give you. You type in the site folder. Wait a minute, no, sorry. You don't type in the site folder because I'm probably telling you to link to it. You know what? I might tell you to type in a site folder and then put the files in there. Either way you do it, it's all just file management. Nothing you just learned in the last 20 minutes has anything to do with Dreamweaver or web design technically. It's just file management. So now that you see green folders, your Dreamweaver site is this all-encompassing friendly thing. So if you open up Index, okay, and you go to Code View, you can see the reason this CSS works, and this is our, our template. See, here, take a look, look. It's all designed, it's all set up, it looks just like it did online. Except now I can put stuff in here. I can change this to welcome to my fishing site, stuff like that. That's what we're going to do coming into the next couple classes. We're going to edit this. Today was just about learning about Dreamweaver and setting up the site. So it's in there now. Everything works. The CSS works. Okay. If you were to change the name of the CSS file, because I actually want you to, to styles, you're going to see something very, very useful happen here. You're going to change this to styles. Okay, wow, I didn't even hit enter yet. Hang on a second. Okay, well, I changed it to sty, and I clicked update links. That was the important thing um, that, that I did right there. So let's do that again properly. Styles, okay. And you can also, if you can't get the long click like I am for renaming, you can right click and go to edit and rename. I'll show you that in a sec. Do you want to change the links to index? Sure, yeah, okay. See what it just did? I had previously named it wrong. It's now it's named Styles. It fixed that link for me. I go back, everything's still working. Okay. You can also right click, go to edit, and rename if you have to rename files. If you were to do that in Windows, for example, let's try it. Let's close up Dreamweaver. Save changes to index. Um, what's going on here? I didn't ask for help on that. Okay. And again, here, if, if you're confused about the. Uh, the Dreamweaver site function, I, I want to encourage you to go back to this link. I'm going to close this out now, but it, it was previously linked in the video there, and it's on FOL for you guys as well. Okay, so I kind of just jumped right over there in lieu of keeping that in the recording. You guys don't need to see me navigating folders at this point. If I go here and I rename it in here back to default, for example, which is what it used to be, nothing asks me to update links. That's the whole problem, right? And students don't follow my instructions, and they start doing stuff and changing file names and moving it around not in Dreamweaver, and they, they forget that every link, every connection to CSS, it's all based on a file path. So when you go back into Dreamweaver, your site's still going to be there. You haven't broken the connection to your folder with the Dreamweaver site. But when you open up Index, holy, the world is over, right? I mean, your tests, you're going to fail your tests. This is not a big deal. You messed up my instructions. You didn't do it with inside of Dreamweaver. You should all be, always be doing it inside Dreamweaver, okay? Always. You did it in Windows, so we can fix this. This is default CSS. Your CSS isn't working. It's probably because the link to the CSS file didn't change with it. So I'm changing it back to what it used to be, which is default CSS, which is what I changed in Windows. Everything's back. Voila, okay? Last change I want you to do is I want you to move this into a folder specifically set up for CSS, okay? And we're going to do that and then we kind of leave it there and we'll start with the beginning of class next week. Now, this is the point where I had it open because I wanted you to see it changing, but here's another one of my rules. Anytime I tell you to change links or, or move files or rename files or rename folders and you already have a site set up, you always do it in Dreamweaver. Second rule, always do it with files closed. Why do you do it with files closed? Because if you have your files open when you do it, you're given the opportunity in Dreamweaver to go and save the file yourself. It doesn't automatically put the changes in the file without giving you a choice of saving it or not, it's just automatic. And you might not have it saved. Here, here, let me just show you. Here's index in design view. Okay, if I go to default, let's let's uh, let's create our folder. So sit on your main folder. 
you, you should all do this because you're going to need to do it anyway. Right click, go new folder and create a folder called CSS, all, all small letters. You could also make it styles, all small letters. That's another appropriate name. I want you to put default.css into CSS. Let's say by accident you went in there and you didn't update links, okay? Okay, then it looks like this and you gotta bring it out back to the main folder. So you gotta bring it back to the top and you don't wanna update again because you went back to normal and then you accidentally put it into images and you updated. So then you took it out of images and you put it in the main folder and you updated. So then you put it in here and you didn't update and you know, it's, I mean, Really guys, I can't even get it to screw up no matter what I do, even with the file open. But my computer's very fast, so here's what happens sometimes. People, let's say I bring it out to the main folder. Here. I bring it back out to the main folder, okay. And I, and I don't update. Let's say I click don't update. You might have clicked update and your still looks like this for like 10 seconds because your save hasn't refreshed. Okay, and here's, here's how to fix this. If, if you've closed your files and you've saved the changes and you've totally made a disaster out of this, okay, and let's say this is in the main folder now, it's supposed to be in CSS. Now I've updated, now I've really messed up, okay? So, and let's pretend that the link to this never, never did work. Let's pretend I had something even more like this and it was updates and updates. So I've broken everything, all right? And this is the last thing we're gonna to learn today. This is a minor level of updating links. We're gonna do more of it in the lecture tomorrow. So where are we here? Uh, let's, let's do a quick check-in because we only got about five minutes left. Why Dreamweaver, welcome screen, exploring the workspace, creation of blank HTML. Oh, split code, live view and live code. That was another thing. If you wanna see what this is gonna look like in the browser, you can go to live view and it'll give you a good idea, but this button over here will actually preview it in the browsers that you have set up in your computer. So Dreamweaver will give you a live view and you can preview it in the browser from Dreamweaver or you can open it up in Windows and just open the browser. So you have several ideas. And another reminder to get more than one browser. Please don't have just Internet Explorer. We'll start talking about that at the beginning of class next time. Um, in live view, you see you can't click on some of the stuff anymore. You can't click on properties. You can't go to CSS usually. Uh, if you go to live code, you can actually edit stuff and it will automatically take it to split view. But I would, I would generally not say to do that if you're still at the amateur level. And this is something we're not even going to get to yet. Okay, that'll be weeks from now. So click it back off live code. If you're in live view and you want to be back off live view, you got to click live again to get back off live view. And now it's in split view if you want to be in design view. So you guys got this, okay? And live view gives you a preview. If you keep going back and forth from split design but you never click live off, you're still in live view. So you got to click back off. But what's really going on here? is that I'm not concerned about live view and code view. I'm concerned that my CSS is broken because I didn't follow the instructions on the test. I didn't drag things the way I was supposed to. Dragging and dropping things in Dreamweaver, clicking on things and renaming them. If it asks you to update and you click update, everything always works. But I have seen students many times in my class say and insist they followed the directions and it didn't work, so they dragged it back and didn't update and then it just screwed them up from the beginning and nothing would... You can fix this if you've messed it up beyond repair, okay? In your uh, HTML for your index, you'll still have the link to the CSS file. It's right here. Look at the link, look at the file. The file's in the folder CSS, okay? That's good. So for some reason, I got two folders on there. I put that in on purpose just to have it messed up. Okay, and, and now I got default.css. I go back to design view. All I did was fix a folder path. How long did that take? You look where the fi file is, you look at your link, you fix it. Now there is a way to link to your CSS file um, here with this little chain, but if you do that, it just adds a new link and you can't really do it until you you know have CSS in it anyway. So it's easiest just to fix the path. Now what's going on? Well, now the problem is some of the images that were in there were coming from the CSS and they were based on image paths. So if I open up the CSS in Dreamweaver, which we haven't done yet, see why this happened? This happened because I kept moving it back and forth and back and forth with files open and then I closed the file and didn't save that file so it never actually put the changes properly into the CSS file and I end up with one of those file path links. This will never happen to you if you do stuff with files closed. If you go back and forth a bunch of times and do it incorrectly, you will run into stuff like this. So your path went to the images folder, okay? Now I'm inside the CSS folder. So my path is still exactly the same. I just have to bounce out to get to it. So all I actually need is the bounce out code in front of images. But because I did it incorrectly, 
it gave me this nonsense here. And the same thing's gonna happen if you do links and we're gonna, we're gonna go through the same exercise in the next lecture too. So let's pretend there was like 20 of these that were screwed up. You would not wanna go manually fix those. All right, and Dreamweaver does have some functions that we're gonna get into in the next lecture. Check links site-wide that will tell you when links are broken, but they don't cover image file paths in CSS files. So you're gonna to have to fix those manually. Right now I don't have any links broken. If I had my CSS link broken in the HTML, it would have found that. But inside of a CSS file, it's not, sorry, I'm on a closed tab group. It's not gonna see these even though they're not working. So what I can do is I can go in and no matter how many there are, I know that everyone has the same bunch of stuff sitting here that's incorrect. So what you can do is you can hit Control F or Command F on your keyboard, which is just find. I'm gonna clear these out. I know that I wanna find this, okay? I don't even have to go to images. I wanna find that all the way up to the forward slash. I wanna find every instance of this in this file. Okay, copy that, put that into find. And I wanna replace it with the bounce out code. I mean, you know, you guys know how to fix this. If you're watching this and you've actually made it this far into this video and, and you're not in my class, this is why you need a little bit of basic knowledge in case you screw stuff up. If you do it exactly how I show you to do it, it won't matter. But what I'm showing you here is how to troubleshoot fixing your image path links in CSS if you didn't update the links properly. You might have five, six, seven, eight of these things on the Dreamweaver test. You don't want to go through and manually fix all those. So a neat little trick that a lot of, a lot of professors don't show students is find and replace. And you can just watch. Replace all. It fixed all, there's three of those that it found. And if you go to it now, you can see it took out all that stuff and put that in there. If you go back here, it should be there. Now there's a chance you will have gone back there and it wouldn't have appeared yet. And it's simply because your computer is not catching up yet. You, ha you haven't hit control S and save this file. So technically, if I close this right now and hit don't save, and then I close this, uh, I can save changes to that. But if I, no, don't save. So if I reopen it, I don't have those image links there, okay? I had to save that file. That's the whole reason to keep, and let's fix that one more time really quick. So here, it's still in there. It's still the same stuff. Replace, save, close, close, close tab group, reopen index, everything's there. If you just do the stuff I'm telling you to do with the files not open, never open, none of that stuff will even happen. So. I'm, I'm still not happy with the name of that file. It should be called styles, not default. Here, I'm gonna do it the other way. Right click, edit, rename, styles, hit enter, update links, update. If you accidentally click don't update, you know how to fix that, okay? It's not that big of a deal. Uh, a couple final notes in your local files area in your files panel. If you see your files sorted with the files on top instead of the folder, it's just because you've sorted differently. You can just click this, it'll put it back to normal. On a test, when I asked for screenshots of that stuff, I would never ask you, I would never grade you down because it didn't look exactly the same as mine. And as always, if, if you get stuff messed up and your files thing is floating around out here and nothing looks right, go back and reset classic view, it'll go back to normal. Okay, so we're gonna pick up right here in our next class. You, you should have a style sheet in your CSS folder called styles. You should have index floating around out here. Inside a raw, you should have the site, the original site zipped and the license folder a file, sorry, and then in here you have the images files. Now you see how, because it's zipped, it's not a green folder. That's why I want it zipped. Because now when you start going into Dreamweaver, you can't by accident go and edit those files because you can't even open them from here. You can only edit the files that are in the main site folder. Okay, so we're gonna leave off there. Uh, let's quickly go back through our list, make sure we covered everything. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, previewing Dreamweaver versus externally. So same deal, this, this is my site in my folder right here. If I open it up in Chrome, it looks like it's gonna preview in the browser, okay? So when we start making changes in the next lecture, you can preview those in the browser to make sure they're working. And then uh, properly saving, we did that. Oh, and a couple final notes on that, and I'll remind you about this um, in, in the next uh, lecture as well. We spent weeks having to type in the extensions .html and .css every time we did a first time file save in Notepad or Text Wrangler. Only with a first time, then you wouldn't have to do it. In Dreamweaver, if you're saving HTML, you just save. You never have to type it in. If you type it in, that's fine too, but you don't have to type it in, okay? And we will go over that more in the next lecture because we're gonna be saving more files. Uh, oh, save all and close all. That was one thing I didn't show you. 
you're going to end up creating a site with a bunch of files. You can save them all at once and close them all at once instead of individually going to each one and saving and closing and saving and closing. Really helpful, neat little tool there that I like to use. And then we imported the uh, pre-designed template. We created the Dreamweaver site and we dealt a lot with files and folders. So we are done for today and that, will, that puts this lecture at a whopping one hour and 20 minutes. This will be the longest one in this entire playlist which will contain a large collection of basic videos and getting you started in Dreamweaver CS6. You can also refer to my advanced playlist uh, here called uh, Manager's Playlist, which is a bunch more shorter videos that kind of deal with specific tools and quick one-off things in Dreamweaver as well. Okay, uh, students in my class, so that, everything I just did, I know this is gonna drive you nuts because this is an hour and 20 minutes. It should take you about five to 10 minutes on the test. Maybe, if that. If it takes you longer, you did something wrong, okay? So I'm going to end on that, and I will see you guys in the next lecture.